Hey guys, today we're going to be doing a quick comparison between the Volkswagen Taos and the Mazda CX-30. Now technically the CX-30 is a subcompact SUV and the Taos is kind of a compact SUV, but so is the Volkswagen Tiguan. So I would be thinking that people would be cross-shopping these two cars since they are both smaller crossover SUVs. Now we have a few differences in specification today. This is a fully loaded Volkswagen Taos SEL all-wheel drive. It has a seven-speed dual clutch, a 1.5 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine. That makes 158 horsepower. Our Mazda CX-30 is a premium front-wheel drive, so that makes 186 horsepower. It has a six-speed automatic transmission and a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four-cylinder. This is actually our personal Mazda CX-30. It's on winter tires. The Taos is on all seasons. We have 19 inch wheels on the Taos, 18s on the CX-30, and you can see just how much beefy sidewall the CX-30 has and how thin and skinny and unfriendly to potholes these 19 inch wheels will be on the Taos. That said though, let's get started with a walk around and compare trunk sizes. So Taos does not have an automatic lifting tailgate. The Mazda CX-30 does. And you can see there are some pretty big differences in interior packaging between these two cars. The Volkswagen Taos, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. If you have a family or you're thinking about having a family, you're gonna want something like this or this size. The CX-30 is small. It can work, but in a pinch. It kind of depends on the car seat situation, but the back seat is tight. It's definitely bigger than the CX-30 three and the Mazda three, but compared to a Taos or a CX-5 or a Tiguan, um, there's just not enough space in the pack really. Same story with the back seats in the Taos, very spacious, very roomy for this class. Tons of headroom, legroom, space to spread out. You've got a nice panoramic sunroof, lots of height too to adjust car seats, whatever, get in and out of here. Volkswagen has always done a pretty nice job with their interior packaging, giving you a lot of usable space. And that's the same case with this Taos. We've got a pretty nice looking interior, lots of physical controls and buttons, which I will give them credit for. That is really nice. They haven't stuck with all the haptic feedback nonsense like they have in the new GTI and the Volkswagen ID4. We have a really user-friendly interface here. Traditional shifter, easy drive mode selector, um, everything is very straightforward. We've got a heated steering wheel. The Mazda does not, unless you go for the turbo. This has heated seats and uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. This is wireless, which is pretty nice too. It's a pretty nice looking interior, though I will say, aside from a few changes, like a more responsive touchscreen and this digital center display, Volkswagen interiors really haven't changed or improved that much, in my opinion, in the last 10 years. I remember I had a 2010 Volkswagen GTI, and all the materials, the touch points, the feel of everything felt pretty similar in that car 10 years ago compared to this Taos today. Now, the Mazda CX-30 is a little bit of a different story. If you look at Mazda interiors from a decade ago, they are nowhere near as nice as this. Now, this is kind of class leading in terms of interior quality and luxury fit, finish, feel, niceness. Um, this is just a really great place to be. The materials, the leather, uh, the design of everything, it feels really premium and really upscale. We have nice ergonomics. Everything's pretty straightforward and easy to use. This interface with the scroll wheel takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you live with it for some time, you appreciate all of the quick access buttons. You've got volume controls, track selection controls. There are a couple annoying things about this Mazda CX-30. The first is if you don't put your seatbelt on when you turn it on, it'll chime about eight times. The second is the parking brake is always automatically engaged whenever you turn this car off. Otherwise, in the front seat, this is, Mazda is a very comfortable place to be. It's a little bit tighter, a little bit more compact. You feel like you're sitting in the car instead of on top of it. This is a much more sporty and comfortable, luxurious driving experience. I feel a little bit more cocooned in this CX-30 compared to the Volkswagen Taos, where I have a much more open greenhouse and better visibility. The Volkswagen Taos also has some annoying features of its own. 
Whenever you open up the door and a car is running, it makes this horrible beeping noise telling you that the engine is on. Um, but that's just kind of a safety thing. Nothing new there. Let's take a look in the back seats here. Actually sit down. So I have just a ton of legroom and a lot of space underneath the front seat to put my feet. Armrests aren't kind of hard. And there's not a lot of padding back here, but it's a pretty comfortable seat. You can't adjust the backrests. They are in a fixed position, but they're pretty comfortable. Um, you've got a couple cup holders back here, a nice little pass through for skis or what have you. You get one USB-C port in the back. Backseat passengers are gonna have to fight over that. Let's compare the back seat of the Mazda. So I actually have this set to my driving position at five foot 10. And we've got our child seat mount back here too, which definitely doesn't help, but it's usable. There's room behind a seat for my knees, but it is just enough room. I have about, uh, about an inch and a half of headroom at five foot 10. These seats are pretty comfy, but you definitely get cozy in here and you feel like you're kind of cocooned in, whereas in the Taos, I can spread out and uh, feel like I have a little bit more space. Ingress and egress though is easy enough, but this is a lot smaller of a vehicle than the Taos. As far as exterior design goes, I think the Mazda CX-30 is definitely a sleeker, sexier looking car. It is still a little bit odd looking. The Taos definitely takes a more traditional crossover approach from a design perspective. It's a bit more of a box on wheels, uh, though it's not a bad looking design. I like these 19 inch wheels from an appearance perspective. Not sure if I'd want to live with them on Michigan roads with all the potholes that we have. The CX-30 hasn't had any issues with uh, our rough roads yet this year. All right, let's take both these cars on the road. We'll start with the Volkswagen Taos and compare how they drive. All right, so we're just gonna drive this in normal drive mode. We'll turn our heated steering wheel on, our heated seats. We've got automatic climate control. Pretty nice looking reverse camera, very similar to the Mazda's. Turning lines. All right, let's hit the road. So as I mentioned earlier, this has the seven speed dual clutch gearbox made with four motion all wheel drive. Now I've driven both versions of the Taos, the front wheel drive and the all wheel drive. And I've got to say, if you need all wheel drive, I guess this is a good option, but the front wheel drive car with the eight speed automatic does drive noticeably better. It's smoother off the line. The engine and transmission are a little bit more responsive and you can also get better fuel economy and save a little bit of money. Now I realize in northern states and in Michigan and kind of in the salt belt, probably you're only going to be finding all-wheel drive cars for sale. And they do drive well enough. It's just that I do prefer the driving dynamics of the front-wheel drive car with that eight-speed automatic as opposed to the seven-speed dual clutch. Volkswagen could improve the off-the-line response and the smoothness of this DCT. It's not their best work if I'm being honest. 99% of the time, it's pretty good, but those few moments where it hesitates a bunch off the line can be a little bit frustrating. Power is decent, even though this has 158 horsepower, you do get a little bit of the sensation. This is kind of an asthmatic turbocharged four cylinder. Uh, there's just not a lot of torque from this 1.5 liter, but once you get into the power, there's plenty of acceleration, plenty of get up and go. This being a lighter weight, compact crossover, it handles pretty well, it's pretty fun to drive. We had this hustling around on the back road at the launch earlier in 2021, and uh, it handled great. Pretty nice steering feel, pretty enjoyable to chuck around. This Volkswagen Taos is kind of the replacement for the Volkswagen Golf in the United States. And I'm still not too sure how I feel about that. The Golf was such a fantastic car. It was so well made, so well built, such a high quality item, and uh, it drove incredibly well. And I'm really not sure that this Taos 
measures up to the way that Golf felt and drove and was, but this is what people want to buy, and I get that, and this house is still one of the best cars that Volkswagen is making right now. And here we've got a few rattles in the back and the hatch. That's nothing too unfamiliar with Volkswagens. Pretty much every car that I've driven from them has a few rattles in the seating area, and sunroof in this area, lots of plastics. Not a huge deal. There is a little bit more wind, tire, and road noise in this Taos compared to the Mazda. That is a very quiet car in speed. All of my controls are super lightweight. My steering is very light. My brake pedal is light. It gives this car just a little bit more of a nimble feel in my opinion. On these 19-inch wheels, every pothole I hit, I cringe just a little bit, hoping that I didn't damage anything. I have really nice visibility in this Volkswagen Taos. I can see out of this front window so well. I have great visibility out of the rear. The mirrors are nicely placed. I sit a lot higher in this than I do in the Mazda CX-30. My seating position is a little bit more upright. Overall, I think this is a fantastic option from Volkswagen. It's just a little bit smaller than the Tiguan, and uh, it still offers just about as much space as you would need, though, for a vehicle. If you have a family, this is definitely the clear option over the Mazda, unless if you're considering something like a CX-5. But um, even the infotainment in this is pretty nice. One complaint that I do have is there's no physical control to adjust the, the dimming switch in the car at night. So you have to go in, swipe down, and then you can adjust the instrument panel and cluster lighting. And it's a little bit weird to swipe down because there's this ridge right here, and you really have to kind of accurately place your finger here to swipe down. One gripe that I have with this Taos ergonomically. Otherwise, everything else in this is pretty easy to use and pretty straightforward. Ride quality is nice, a little bit more NVH and sound over bumps, that's probably due to these larger 19-inch wheels and narrower, thinner side walls. The engine is nice and quiet, no disagreeable sounds being piped in. And one big advantage with this Volkswagen Taos is its travel assist. If you get a Volkswagen today, I would definitely spec it with this system. It's a really nicely calibrated driving assistance system. The lane centering, the adaptive cruise control, all work incredibly well, especially on the highway. Um, it's a really nicely designed system that's super easy to use. It's just one button press and you're there. The system is easy to use with all the buttons on the left side of the steering wheel here. Um, I've really enjoyed living with this travel assist system this week. It's done a really nice job uh, taking a little bit of the fatigue off of the driving experience. Fuel economy numbers are going to be pretty similar between these two cars. Both will average around 34 miles to the gallon in the real world on the highway uh, around town. I imagine they'd be pretty similar to around 26 to 28. Overall, I really like this Volkswagen Taos. I think it's a solid option in the compact SUV market. It would be nice for them to elevate their interior quality just a little bit, but for the most part, everything in here is passable, it's acceptable, it's easy to use, very ergonomically friendly, and I appreciate that they haven't gone with some silly touch interface for everything um, in this Taos. It's still a very nice car to live with on a daily basis. All right. Let's go drive the Mazda CX-30 and compare how that is to this Taos. The trick to get around the eight bongs to remind you to put your seatbelt on is to put your seatbelt on immediately or before you start up the car. So I mentioned earlier my little annoyance with this parking brake always turning on whenever you turn off the car. Basically, all you have to do is just tap the accelerator and it'll automatically disengage, which is nice. 
Um, but you get this little weird lurch when you start off every time. All right, off we go in the Mazda CX-30. We have a little bit heavier steering. Everything feels a bit weightier, a little bit more solid. From the door thunk, the door close, to the, the way the car rides over pavement, I feel like I'm in a more luxurious vehicle. Ride quality is maybe a little bit stiffer than the Volkswagen Taos, um, but overall the two aren't far off. Honestly, the power doesn't feel that much different in this Mazda CX-30, just because we have a naturally aspirated engine and all that power is at the top of the rev range. In the Taos, around town, the torque from the turbo kicks in. I think the Mazda maybe has a little bit more of a linear power band and that 2.5 liter engine with that just larger displacement seems to fill on the torque a little bit better. But for the most part, both engines feel about the same power wise even though this is a higher horsepower rating the six-speed automatic is a nice transmission it's not Mazda's best work however kind of like the Taos and uh, I do prefer the way the six-speed automatic in the CX-5 drives still though I do like it much more than the seven-speed dual clutch in the Volkswagen Taos I think it's a smoother and nicer transmission to live with so right off the bat the Mazda is clearly the enthusiast choice between these two cars, and the Taos is the more practical, pragmatic choice. Uh, you kind of get that impression on first appearances, how the two cars look, uh, but the driving experiences are definitely very different. I am surprised at how nice and just comfortable and luxurious this Mazda is compared to the Taos. This Mazda CX-30 definitely punches above its price point in terms of feel, fit, finish, quality and just kind of perceived luxuriousness that's definitely something Volkswagen could work on in uh, its future models overall I really like the way this Mazda CX-30 drives down the road it's a little bit more hot hatch and less crossover which I tend to appreciate the ride quality is a little bit stiffer than some people may like but of course if you're coming from some enthusiast cars and this is your new grown-up Mazda then you're probably used to something that rides a little bit stiffer if you've been in like a GTI or a Focus ST or Fiesta ST or something like that in the past This is a genuinely fun and very nice car to drive. Really the only cons that I found with this CX-30 in my ownership is that it's just a little bit small and a little bit cramped for family use. And in that case, uh, for that use case, I would recommend of something like a Volkswagen Taos or a Volkswagen Taos if you're going to be needing to put kids in the back. This Mazda is just a little bit too tight. We probably should have gotten a CX-5. But that said, really prefer the way the CX-30 drives. It's a really nice enthusiast choice. It's a fun car. It's been great to live with. Um, the sound system is fantastic. This Bose Premium Audio is really, really top level really kind of only rivaled by the new Honda Civic, but that has a lot more road noise. And that's another thing about this Mazda CX-30, it is very quiet on the interior at speed. You could drive this on the highway 80, 90 miles an hour, and it is almost silent down the road. Whereas the Taos has quite a bit more wind, road, and tire noise. Our driving assistance systems don't work nearly as well in this Mazda CX-30. The adaptive cruise control is just okay. I'd say it's about average, whereas in the Taos, it's a little bit above average. And there isn't really any type of lane centering system in this Mazda. It just kind of bounces you back and forth between the lines. So the Taos definitely wins out in that respect. Ultimately, these are two pretty different vehicles, even though I think they're going to be cross-shopped and they're in 
almost the same class virtually. They're about the same size. It's amazing to see how much better the interior packaging and the use of space is in the Taos and how tighter and smaller the interior is in this Mazda compared to its overall size. Uh, we've got a lot of <laughs> door panel width and just design elements kind of encroaching upon your space in this Mazda. Upon first impressions, it can feel a little bit cramped, but the more you live with it, the more time you spend in it, you do get used to it, and it tends to be a little bit cozy. Uh, I feel like I'm in a cockpit instead of just in a big open fishbowl. But it kind of depends on what you prefer and what you're looking for with each of these vehicles. If you need a more practical option, the Taos is the clear winner. If you want a fun, sporty vehicle, and you're still kind of holding out on having a family, then this Mazda CX-30 is a great option too. I would recommend going, driving both, seeing which you prefer, um, and there's just definitely a lot to think about with these two options. Also, it's just a nice comparison to see how Mazda is building their cars these days compared to Volkswagen. Um, I think Mazda right now is doing what Volkswagen was doing about a decade ago, whereas they're really trying to uh, capitalize on the affordable luxury buyer market and Volkswagen is just kind of trying to build affordable cars that um, maybe aren't really that much nicer than they were a decade ago. Still, I think uh, both are good options in the market and the Taos is one of my favorite vehicles that Volkswagen is making these days. So anyway, that's going to sum up the Volkswagen Taos versus the Mazda CX-30. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.